Hello and welcome back to the Building a Better Budget series. My name is Michaela and we are here for part two of phase two of this series. As a reminder, we're going through three phases as part of the Building a Better Budget series. The first phase is evaluate, the second phase is attack, and the third phase is optimize. We've already gone through all of evaluate and we've gone through part one of attack. Today, we're focused on part two, which is paying off debt. So last week we went through how to put together a high level plan, the structure of a plan, setting goals, looking at your spending, all that fun stuff. But you may have the question, okay, I have my goals set, but I have debt. So where does debt fit into the broader picture of my financial goals? How do I prioritize that debt with my other savings goals? And today we're going to answer that question. As always, if you are liking these videos, if you are liking this series and you're following along, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, show me some love, and let's get right into it. So when it comes to paying off debt, there are two strategies that a lot of financial experts, financial gurus will talk about. The first is the debt snowball method, and the second is the debt avalanche method. The debt snowball method is a strategy where you pay off your debt from the smallest loan to the largest loan. The idea here is that you have quick wins, you're paying off the small loans first, you're gaining momentum, and it's snowballing into this larger momentum towards paying off all of your debt. The debt avalanche method, on the other hand, is focused on interest rates. So with that method, you are paying off the loans that have the highest interest rates first. The purpose of doing this is to knock out your high interest debt so you're not accumulating more and more interest over time, and ultimately you pay less over the life of your loans. Now, depending on who you ask, different financial experts, financial gurus will have a different answer for you. But in my opinion, I believe that the debt avalanche method is the superior debt payoff method. The reason being is because the debt avalanche method focuses on interest rates and you're focused on paying off the most expensive interest rates first. Because you're focusing on paying off high interest debt first, ultimately you're gonna end up paying less interest over time as opposed to using the debt snowball method. For example, if you used the debt snowball method and you had a large credit card debt that had a 27% interest rate and a smaller student loan that had a 4% interest rate and you focused on the student loan first, over the time that you're paying off that student loan, your credit card balance is accumulating interest at 27%. So that credit card debt is literally snowballing on top of itself while you're focused on paying off the loan that just had the smallest balance. It's definitely not the most optimal way to pay off your debt and that is why I think that the avalanche method is superior. So when it comes to the strategy of how your debt fits into your plan, we're gonna go through the steps on how to figure this out. So the first thing that you need to do is list out all of the different debt that you have. List out the balance, what you currently owe in interest, as well as the interest rate. And doing this is gonna help us prioritize what you need to pay off first. Different examples of debt could be credit card debt. So if you have more than one credit card where you carry a balance, make sure you look at all of the different balances on that credit card as well as the interest rates for both. Student loans are another example and different types of loans carry different interest rates. So federal loans are actually on pause with no interest at the time of filming this video. That could change when you are watching this in the future but right now they're at zero. So that's actually a really awesome thing and we'll get into how to prioritize that as part of your broader debt payoff goals, but make sure you include that. Private student loans are not on pause. So if you have a private student loan, make sure you include that here. Auto loans as well. So once you have all of those listed out, make sure you put them in order of highest interest rate first and then sum up how much debt you actually have. From there, we're gonna start building minimum payments into your plan first. So minimum payments on your debt should be considered essential expenses. That is a payment that you are obligated to make and it is high priority. It is an essential expense. It's not something that you can really flex on. It's not something that you can deprioritize based on your lifestyle spending. That is an essential expense that you owe, you are obligated to every single month. So make sure those are built into your plan first and having those built into your plan as an essential is also gonna be able to help us dictate how much money you have left for non-essentials as well as your goals. Remember, 
going back to the video from before this, your plan is a puzzle and we're trying to figure out what pieces fit into that puzzle in order to get you back to zero so all of your income is being spent in the most optimal way. In order to do this, we need to know how much money you have going towards essentials so that we can figure out how much money you have to work with for your goals and your non-essentials in a way that works for your life. So factoring in your minimum debt payments as an essential is a crucial step in figuring out how much money you have left. So now moving into how to prioritize your debt as part of your broader financial goals. And we're gonna use just a high level example here. So let's say that after your essential expenses and after you figured out what your ideal number is for your lifestyle expenses, let's say that you have $600 a month that you can put towards savings. And let's also say that you currently have $5,000 on your credit card that you are working towards paying off and $20,000 in student loans. And remember, your minimum student loan payment has already been factored into your essential expenses as well as your minimum credit card payment. Your credit card has a 27% interest rate and your student loan has a 4% interest rate. And you have $600 to work with, but you also wanna be saving up for an emergency fund. So how are you gonna put this $600 to use? In this instance, we would want to prioritize your credit card debt first. So depending on the different types of savings goals that you have, in this case, you wanna save up for an emergency fund, we would need to figure out how can we map out your $600 towards these three different goals in the most optimal way. So because your credit card has the highest interest rate, it also takes highest priority in us paying it off. So the majority of that $600 you would wanna to put towards your credit card. That being said, we also need to think about the life cycle of your other two goals. So how quickly do you wanna pay off your student loan and how quickly do you wanna save up your emergency fund? Remember, we're going back to the video before where we're thinking about timelines and deadlines for your goals. And if a goal feels unreasonable for you in the timeline that you've set, you can just stretch it out. So if this were me, what I would do is I would probably put three to $400 towards that credit card. The reason being is because I have a fair amount of money that I can work with in terms of savings, and I wanna make sure that I smash that credit card as fast as possible, or else I'm gonna be accumulating more and more interest. And that is where I would wanna put the majority of my dollars. In terms of student loans, the interest rate is much, much lower at just 4%, and you've already hit the minimum payment on that loan. So while you have your credit card that has a very high interest rate, I personally would probably not put any additional money towards that student loan until I've eliminated the credit card. So until I pay off my high interest credit card, I would stop putting more than the minimum payment towards my student loan in order to prioritize the credit card payment. In terms of emergency funds, so that is another goal that should be high priority because if you don't have an emergency fund and you run into an emergency, what has to happen? You have to put that emergency on your credit card. And what does that do? That amplifies the credit card problem we already have. I would put the remaining money around $200 towards my emergency fund in order to keep that as a high priority goal. So what does this look like? You have your minimum credit card payment and your minimum student loan built into your essential expense. Then you have your $600 remaining for this example. The majority of that $600, in this case we're saying 400, is going towards your credit card payment. We've put additional money towards your student loan on pause because the interest rate is significantly lower and we wanna focus on the credit card. Then we're also prioritizing saving up for your emergency fund. So the remainder of that 600, $200 or so is going towards your emergency fund. If you were to do this for six months, then you would have put $2,400 towards your credit card in addition to the minimum payment. And you've also would have saved $1,200 for an emergency fund. So as you can see, I hope that that example kind of exemplifies in my mind the thought process and the methodology for thinking about these goals in terms of how they fit in with each other and then how they fit in with your broader financial goals. If you wanted to fully prioritize your credit card payment and you already had an emergency fund or your emergency fund was halfway funded, what you could do was deprioritize your emergency fund and put all $600 towards that credit card loan and try and pay it off faster than the timeline that you've set initially. So I want you to remember, when it comes to prioritizing your goals, especially prioritizing your debt goals, there's no cut or dry answer, but prioritizing high interest rate debt first 
is the most important. Prioritizing savings goals is the hardest part here, especially when it comes to prioritizing debt. This is why it's so important to have a tool where you can map things out and look at, okay, if I put this much money towards this debt goal, how fast could I pay it off? If I put this much money towards my student loan, how fast could I pay it off? If you don't have a tool that maps those things out, it's really, really difficult to visualize and see how quickly you can pay off your debt. This is why I love the personal finance dashboard. Remember, that is my signature planning tool. As always, you can purchase it via the link in my notes below. And the reason why I love it so much is because it has this annual spending plan viewpoint. And in it, you can prioritize your savings goals and map out across the full year if you were to plug and play different amounts of these goals, where you would land at the end of the year based on your income and your essential expenses. This kind of tool changed my life when it came to prioritizing my goals. To wrap this video up, I wanna emphasize that your debt payoff strategy does not need to be complicated. I hope that this video simplified what that strategy could look like because I feel like putting together a debt payoff strategy feels like this hard, difficult thing to do and it's not. You just need to know what you're working with and how it plays into your other goals. The debt avalanche method, in my opinion, is the best method for paying off debt because it smashes out your debt with the high interest rate first. That way you're paying less interest over the life of your loan and you're also prioritizing paying down the principal on your higher interest debt. Ultimately, you'll just end up paying less in total, which obviously is what we want. If you have questions about how to build debt into your plan, how to strategize your debt payoff plans, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. But otherwise, I will catch you guys next week in the last part of phase two of the Building a Better Budget series.